honestly, like looking up and looking forward to this, like a week ago, two weeks ago, all my family's like, are you, are you excited? Like, how do you feel? And I was like, no, no, like, you know, a little nervous, a little anxious about how this whole thing's going to go about. And, and then when I landed in, in take the shuttle to the hotel, check in, and everything is just first class, like it usually is with the Canucks. And it's not like that everywhere across the league. It's not a shot at any other organization, but this organization has always treated me with first class and my family, and everything just felt so good. It's, like, it was, it's a weird feeling to describe, but it's like, it's like being home. And started my career here, obviously had my kids both at Vancouver General Hospital, and coming back and walking into this arena, it was such a good feeling, stepping on the ice. I don't know if you guys saw Morning Skate, but I dominated out there. <laughs> but uh, just like that ice felt good again. It's, it's just a weird feeling to describe, but so many good memories. And, and so far, like this, this experience has been amazing. Super grateful for the Canucks and for, for Jim Rutherford for calling me in the summer. We had something kind of in the works with the old regime back in uh, 2020. COVID happened, we all know that, and that didn't flow, you know. And then after that, it's not like one of those things where I'm going to come and ask again. You just kind of wait and see how it unfolds. And luckily, there's some great people. Alex Mitchell again, another shout out, uh, with the Canucks that were pushing for this to get done for, for themselves and the fans, but also for, for me and my family to have some sort of closure. And it's been, it's been amazing. So try not to be too much of a distraction. Like I had a little you know, nice morning skate in the dressing room, trying to talk with the guys. But I understand what's going on right now, and I understand what's, what this team is up against. And it's a big game tonight for both teams, really. I know you don't care about the other one, but um, it's a big game. They both need wins. So I'm trying to, like, do my thing and, and enjoy it, have closure for my family, but not distract the rest of the guys. What was your message to the players this morning, Kevin? I mean, you were all um, winning when you played. So could you impart some of that to them today? I didn't want to preach to the players. Um, I'm not their coach, but I, I think I just spoke a little bit of, which I think they can have, you know, they can relate to is, is the culture. I think the, the thing that I'm the most proud of with my tenure with the Canucks was not, not the finals, not, you know, the, uh, the president's trophies. It was the culture we had here for a good, I'd say a good like six to 10 years. Um, and I knew it was good because when players would come from other teams, or Bo would come up, or draft picks, they would tell us, this is a good culture, this is something special. Guys from other teams that had played for like 10 years, like this is special. And the culture was so special because there was a lot of us that were uber competitive with each other. We all wanted to be better than the other person. We all battled and we all tried to perfect our craft, whether it was tipping pucks in front of that. This is it's almost verbatim what I told these guys this morning, but it was just about having pride in what you do, being competitive about it, and pushing each other. And I think that, you know, that's, that's the, the sign of a good team with a good identity. You're remembered for so many things, Kevin, but how would you like to be remembered um, in the big picture? I mean, you, you put the fear into the opposition, but you also had a 40-point year. You had 12 goals. Three. <laughs> and, and you're played 20-plus minutes a night. So is that how you oh, want goal, to be Keep going, keep going. All-time uh, <laughs> most goals for Canucks Stanchion, defensemen in the playoffs. Stanchion goal, yeah, <laughs> embellishment. I mean, yeah. Like, it's funny, it. like everyone know, remembers the fights first yeah. and foremost. Yeah, yeah. And I'm super proud of the fights because um, like I'm self-taught. I grew up just scrappy in general with two yeah. brothers and a dad. And, and I'm super proud of the fights because most of them were sticking up for a teammate or trying to give our team an edge. But... You know, I, I'm also proud, like I also call myself a skill guy. I know I wasn't a skill guy, but I could play the game too. I wasn't just a slug out there. But I think like being a good teammate was always really important to me. So like my wife put together a little video with I think like 55 of my ex Canucks teammates, all giving like a little blurb and I, I teared up and uh, turn them. <laughs> but like just everyone mentioned like you're a good teammate. You're fun to be around. I think that's super important to me. And we talked to Berkey last week when the Pens were in town. He said, oh, you, uh, you were a little better than they thought you. You turned out a lot better than they thought you could be. Does yeah. That, when you hear something like that, what do you, what do you think? Standard, standard was low, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, Berkey's like a really good friend now and, and mentor. And we've talked a lot over the years working together. And he's like, your skating wasn't good. I'm like, what? Like, I thought my skating was my asset. <laughs> so there's something wrong with the evaluation there. But no, Berkey gave me an opportunity. And I think he liked my mentality and the way I just battled and competed. So um, who knows if it would have turned out the same way with another team and GM, but you know, Berkey gave me my first chance for sure. So I owe him a lot. Kevin, 
Kevin, what's, what's the memory that's kind of sticking with you as you prepare to close this chapter of your life here? Uh, I just, I never like looked back and reminisced at all in my career. I was always like tunnel vision, like what's next? You know, what, what do we need to do next to have a good season? Complete, like what's the next game, the next, you know, big thing? I never really like looked back and enjoyed it. So I think now that I haven't played in five, almost five years, now like I'm starting to kind of reminisce a little bit and look back. And my son's getting older, he's 15, and he's been playing hockey competitively for a long time. And, and his buddies are starting to ask me more questions about when I played and stuff like that. So it's just like a time to kind of like look back and reflect because I never did that through my career. So you just kind of enjoy, you know, a lot of the, the accomplishments now and, and the struggles that it took to get there. And, and then all the people that helped, you know, it takes a village, right? And I didn't invite everybody here, but the people that are in my suite tonight are like, there's, there's my suite and another one. So there's like probably like 30 of the most influential people in my career that are all here. And it's fun to be able to, my one brother's not here because he's on a trip somewhere, but other than him, and I wish my grandparents were alive to see this, but like all those people, I owe them a lot because I wouldn't have been here without them. Kevin, when you talk about the qualities that made you a good teammate, do you think that those have, have transitioned and been part of what has made you so successful so quickly in, uh, on Hockey Night in Canada as a broadcaster? Well, when I came into Hockey Night, it was like officially, like in the, on the panel, it was the week after Don Cherry was fired. So there, there was a lot of tension and, and adversity, and it was, there was like, it was thick in there. And I came in, and honestly, like, I approached it like being on a hockey team. I, I just wanted to be a good teammate, make it light, a little levity here, joke there, tease this person, but they know that I still care about them. So, like, I haven't tried to do anything special with, with the panel and the hockey night. I just approach it like a team. Like, Elliot's my team member, Ron's my team member, Jennifer, Kelly. And I love them, but I also like to have fun and keep things light and... I think everybody performs better when they're light. Like Shorty's so tense before the shows, and that's why like his voice cracks all the time. Like I don't want that, so I keep it light. And uh, the the team, if the team gets along and and it's pushing in the right direction, usually you have a good product. How much has your experience as like a youth hockey coach helped you be a broadcaster? Tons, tons. So when I break down, I've had people and friends and guys in the NHL say you can break down things where it's understandable. Everybody knows the game that, that plays. Like everybody in both dressing rooms, they know the game. But it's it takes like a while to develop how to like teach it and be concise and be clear. Uh, and teaching and coaching kids for as long as I have. It's been like 10 years I've been coaching kids. And then I started my academy four years ago where I'm like the primary guy every day teaching, coaching, trying to figure out a way to get through to these kids, make it so easy. Uh, that's helped a ton because it, it's a, I'm able to break it down for the Canadian hockey fan where, and they're pretty knowledgeable. I think it'd be different in the U.S., but in Canada, they're pretty knowledgeable. So you can't like dumb it down because they're, they're an educated fan, but you also have to make it understandable so they can actually appreciate what you're saying. And, and take them somewhere too, I suppose, because you can't mm -hmm. just be like, here's what happened. You have to understand the bigger picture of why it happens. The same with the player, exactly. I guess. It's a, great, it's a great game, and there's so much strategy involved, and sometimes it's so fast that you just, you're just watching the speed of the game and how quick everything's happening. And then if, if you can slow it down, you can kind of show, well, this is why that happened, and this is what he's actually trying to do. Like, as much as you think guys just go out there and wing it and just, like, react, it's, there's a strategy in all three zones. You have a responsibility, and you have, like, kind of a general idea of what you have to do and then you, you operate within the system and then if you have like a special skill set you can make some pretty skilled plays like within the system so I just try to make that a little bit more clear when did that start coming clear to you at when you were playing it didn't huh. I, I never <laughs> I never thought that you mean like the me like getting the media you know now yeah oh uh, uh, I mean I never thought I'd be in media I know like some people like thought oh I'd be natural I never thought I'd be in media and I just I, when I first stopped playing, I told myself, and I had some good advice, I'm not going to say no to anything. I'm going to try everything once. So every opportunity, whether it was business and, and, uh, or hockey or sports, like I did a lot of things. I tried a lot of things. And this media thing just happened to work out well. Kevin, it's easy. Like, what an easy job, eh? It looked like you, <laughs> Kevin, it looked like you shared a nice moment with your mom in the stands. Uh, what's it like coming full circle uh, with your family uh, that obviously uh, uh, took you through uh, all the stages of minor hockey uh, and then to bring, it, uh, bring some closure today? 
Yeah, like, like my mom just, as soon as I saw her, she's like, so many good memories in this rink. Like my mom has been obviously like anyone's mom. She's been a huge part of my life and so many good memories early in my career. I remember when I went to Vino and I said, we, we had the father's trips every couple of years and I said, can we do a mother's trip? And he's like, oh, okay. And then so we had the moms all come and that's like the highlight of my mom's, you know, of the decade for her was going to California. It was I think it was Anaheim in LA and uh, the moms all came in. We lost both games, but so that was the last mother's trip, I think, that this organization's <laughs> ever had. But, and we always won with the dads. But my mom still talks about that. She's like, I remember like Kyle Wildwood's mom doing this and Kessler's mom saying that. And like, she has so many great memories from this organization. And then on top of that, I went to Vino a couple years later. I go, can we have a siblings trip? And he goes, that's a great idea. What's a sibling? <laughs> so then we had a siblings trip and that was we won both games for that so I don't know if you've had one since but um, yeah, good memories right there uh, almost since he arrived in this organization people have been saying Quinn Hughes is the best offensive defenseman this team has ever had it's got to be hard for you not to take that personally did you see the two terrible passes he gave me in the skate this morning? <laughs> so we're doing we're doing wakey wakey which is a drill that everybody in the NHL does he puts himself behind me and is like, go ahead. So he's passing to me at some point. And after practice, I go over to my son on the bench and I go, what do you think? He goes, Quinn gave you two burgers, like right in your triangle. I'm like, I know, number one defenseman, can't put one on my team. I think he did it on purpose. <laughs> Try to embarrass me. No, like he's, he's a great player to watch. He's a lot of fun and uh, he's the new age defenseman for sure. It would have been fun to play with him. It would have been a lot of fun to have him as a partner instead of some of the other slugs I had to play with. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, do you, you, you bring up new age defensemen. Um, considering your defensive skills and ability to move the puck, do you almost wonder if you were five, ten years ahead of your time based on your style of play? I, I think I would, I could adapt. I always felt like I could adapt to, like I talked to some people that are like, that played in the 90s, they're like, you would have been great in our era. And then now like, you always think that you can adapt, right? That, like I always prided myself on being like, we joke around about being an offensive defenseman. I, I consider myself a complete defenseman my whole career. So I wanted to be good at every part of the game. I wanted to be physical, tough, block shots, but I also wanted to move the puck, be skilled. I wanted to be in the power play every year. I wanted to be in the penalty kill. So with that, I, I hope I could have played in any era. I don't know. I would have tried. One thing that you've talked about before is the day after losing the cup final in 2011, getting the call and, and ultimately extending your contract. Uh, not testing free agency that time, leaving some money on the table to be here. Uh, and that's sort of in the wake of one of the worst days this franchise has ever had. What does that say about how you feel about this organization and hockey in this city? Well, I never wanted to leave this organization. And then fast forward to my last year, I, I was asked, and I understand it's a business, I was asked, your contract's expiring. You know, Cass already left, Burr was on his way out. Uh, we're, we're going young, get it, you know, business, but I never wanted to leave. I still said, uh, actually, can I stay? And they're like, no, like, I think you got to leave. And <laughs> so I never actually wanted to leave, but I did, obviously. And then, but this, I always consider this home. I always considered myself a Canuck. When I was in Anaheim, and uh, I love my teammates in Anaheim, but they used to say, you and Kess talk about Vancouver a lot. You guys are always talking about Vancouver. I'm like, well, like, it's the way we did it here. We had a good thing going for a long time. A lot of good memories. We had a really great culture and a lot of success. And so I always considered myself a Canuck, even um, when I left. I, I, I want to formulate this right because I'm not wearing a helmet. Um, whether, whether, you, whether you were a fan favorite or not in your playing days, since then, between the Sedin speech and the way you seem to represent a, a, a Canuck's point of view on Hockey Night in Canada, you've almost emerged as this like raconteur, like the person who represents this franchise for fans, and it's almost deep in that bond. Are you aware of this sort of dynamic? Does that mean anything to you? I, I think I'm a little bit aware of it, because I don't, this is the first time I think anyone's ever done something like this in this organization. So that's the one thing, right, Alex? So like, I'm pretty honored about that. Like, I'm pretty honored that, you know, like, I'm, they're, they're allowing me to do this. I just talked with Jim upstairs, Rutherford, and I'm like, I'm very appreciative of you doing this, because I don't remember the organization ever doing this for anybody. So, no, like it, I, I think I know, but th this organization means a lot to me too. So it's a two-way street for sure, but uh, I owe a lot to this organization and I think I left it all out on the, on the ice and in the community for this, for this team as well. Yeah, 
picking up on that, how much pride do you have in the community work that you did while you were here and the mental health advocacy that's gone on top of that? So well? like that comes with the territory, I think, with being a Canuck. And, and luckily, we have a great alumni here. And when I came up, the alumni were around a lot, like the Kirk McLeans and uh, Harold Schnapps. And, and, and Steamer was my coach in the minors, so him as well. But like the Yurke Lumi, all the guys that you see around all the time, Dave Babich, uh, Pat Quinn, and they set the precedent, I think, and they show you the way, and then you follow, and you learn this is how we do it in Vancouver. You're not just a hockey player. You're in the community. You're doing hospital visits. And then it's pretty cool to see everybody branch off to what they're passionate about after that. So you do, like, the mandatory, even though you're not really forced, but the things that you're asked to do as a team, and then everyone kind of goes out on their own little, like, the, the Sedins are donating money to the Children's Hospital. That's important to them. I'm going mental health, like Burroughs is doing his thing, you know, speech therapy or whatever he was involved with. <laughs> Cass is doing modeling shoots. Like we all went our separate ways and did, and did our own charity, uh, charitable endeavors. But that, that came with the territory. And obviously the mental health thing, it's not like I didn't choose it. It fell into my lap, you know, by circumstance. And I kind of took it because that was, you know, what happened. It was a big loss for me and for the organization and tried to do as good of a job as I could with that about Rick on a day like today? I do. Like, I think about him, and he was in that video that my wife showed, and I think about, like, Wes, his brother. I kind of wish Wes was here. I kind of wish I, I reached out to him because he was a big part. Rick and I, like, everyone knows the story. So like, we came up together, brought up, same day, called up, spent so much time, grinded it out in the minors, fought back-to-back -back in a line brawl, I remember, in Manitoba. Like, so many good memories. Lived with me, knew about my daughter being born before I did. Knew that, was there when I asked my brother to be my best man. Like, so many amazing memories. Uh, so, it's been such a long time now. It's sad. Uh, Kevin, you're probably going to get a very warm reception from the fans tonight. Can you just talk a little bit about uh, what that kind of acknowledgement means to you and your relationship with the fans here over the years? Yeah, it's good, but, like, it wasn't like I was always, like, the hero, right? Like, you used to carve me all the time, right? Like, I, I came out of the gates, and let's be honest here, right? Like, it's not like my road has been like this. <laughs> got me my contract. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, so, like, I came out of the gates, and, and I had a really good first couple years, and then I got injured, and production was down, and I was called on it. I was called on it by the media, by the fans, and then responded. Then I had another injury. Production went down. So that, that's the great thing about Vancouver. I had this argument with Kelly Rudy the other day, and he's like, oh, I would never want to – I never wanted to play in a Canadian city in my career. And I'm like – I want, I always want, I actually loved it. And he's like, well, there's so much scrutiny. I go, yeah, but there's so much great accolades when you're playing well. And then when you're not, you're held accountable. So what's so bad about that? Like, you're a little bit sensitive when you're a player and you hear stuff about you in the media that's negative. I go, but that comes with the territory. Yeah, I think the good far outweighs the bad of playing in the Canadian market. And while my tenure was not perfect with the Canucks, I always felt super respected and cheered for by the fans. Kevin, talking about the alumni and the, the bridge that was built from the previous generation, um, are, what do you think of the Sedins kind of being in that role now for the current Canucks? And have you had a chance to see them yet since you've been here? No, I, I'll, see, I'll see Dan. I talked to both of them. I uh, haven't seen them yet. Got here last night. Um, see them tonight. No, the Sedins are... It's funny that they're being honored now. Like they sh they should have been on. They should have been in the Hall of Fame while they were playing. Like that's how good of people and players they are. So, we could do this whole interview about the Sedins. I could talk about them all day long. Um, two of the best. So glad that they're still involved in the in the organization. I said in my speech, like the culture around here that still kind of exists a little from my time is is because of the Sedins. They are a big part in creating that culture of being the hardest worker, being the best player, being the most humble being uh, just the best at everything. Like great role models, great teammates. I mean, you guys have heard all the good things about them. They're all true and then some.